はあ Well, I'll die defending the Christian brothers who taught me manners, respect, and discipline. Because anyone my age group who says they weren't slapped in school, or in their home, or on the street, are detached from reality, because it was called survival. And we all earned it. And what kept my sanity was my sporting life. Now, some people, oh, I don't know, some people have different personalities, but acceptance of what life's all about and what you have to do to survive. Because what I had to do to survive from a very young age, because I never had a holiday as a child, I never had a birthday party as a child. And I remember, and no disrespect to anyone, eating the butts of apples off the street and knocking at neighbours for a bit of bread and lucky to get porridge for my dinner. Because we came from poverty. My dad, my natural dad was a carpenter and uh, he died a young man and left my mother with five children. The eldest was 12. And I was the second youngest. I was eight, eight years and ten months old. And um, this happened and I was put into an orphanage by Vincent de Paul with my brother. And I was there for two and a half years until my mother then married her husband's brother, who was the John Cavanagh here, who was my full uncle, had to get permission from Rome. And then he became a stepfather, and as a result of that, we came out of the orphanage. And he was my idol, so he wasn't my direct father, full uncle, but still the generations and family were still the same. And after assisting or helping him when he got ill some years later. Uh, nine years, I then succeeded in, succeeded in buying the, the, pre, the, the business off the family. And that was 1973 when I could concluded the deal. And then we had just the bar and been the sixth generation here. And now we have the sixth, seventh and eighth generations working here. And I'm very proud we live here. And my day starts at nine in the morning until three the next morning, seven days a week. And people say, I wouldn't have your job. Sorry, it's my life. Because uh, in this game, it's definitely unique and you have to be born into it because a lot of people came on this, into this game and they hadn't a clue and they destroyed the game as it is because if, you wouldn't know what a pub is now. And I like to think I have a traditional Run no televisions, no pipe music, and art of conversation, and family orientation, and involvement total. And I think that's very important. You can't relate today to yesterday. And when you go back all to the, the, the I'm 72 now, and you can't relate, and no one can relate unless they've had hardship and know what it is to survive, then their values. Because if things are done for you, or you're given the money to do it, you have no values. The best thing you do is do it all yourself, and achieve, and be prepared to make mistakes and learn from them. What's wrong with that? And if you make a mess of something, you, know, you put your hand up and say, sorry, I'm wrong. What's wrong with that? People will hate you because they can't get at you, because you're telling the truth. Now that might sound funny to people, especially in this game, because you meet A to Z. I mean, I've, met the rogues, the <coughs> criminals, protection rackets and everything else. I'm still here and they're not. Because I have values. And I will die rather than surrender to these people who are no class, in my opinion. Because you have to have standards. And people come here to welcome. And everyone's friends. And we're here to share or give advice or help each other. Not to be bullied or ridiculed. What's the point in that, you know? When I came out of Guinness, I was 33 years of age and of course I was immersed in a thing called work and paying back to banks, etc. So in 1980, when I had the bar paid off and the lounge built, I then took on full-time staff. So I said, what do I do with myself now? So I extended my youth by, uh, they advertised the first Dublin City Marathon, so I did that. So I, st so I st was 42, I've run 170 marathons and I've done 18 ultras, 100 mile races, 24 hour races, 
Yeah, I've, I've traveled all the UK, I've traveled Europe. There's not many that would hit me in Europe, but the, the American ones seem to hit me best. But Berlin is the priority one, yeah. That's fantastic. But the group of people I met in that, in the running, it's amazing how decent, good people they are. They have one thing in common, running. And you meet all characters and the fantastic people. You know, I was an extension of my youth as well, and I'm 72. I still run, and uh, hopefully next year I'm going to come out with um, another agenda to run if my favourite marathons before I consider maybe I won't be able to do any more. Do you find it hard to be positive living beside a graveyard, though, or is it? Well, if I go in there, I keep walking around in case of stock taken, you know, because. No, no, you nothing to fear with the dead. It's the living you have to fear. Like I mean, no, the, but look at all the geniuses that are in there. We're only specking in, in what the word eternity is, or you know. So you're going to die. That's one thing you're sure of. When you don't know. I mean, some people die very young. Other people die quite old. And the quality of life is the important thing. And the longer you have that, the more active you are. We all learn from each other. The most important thing in my category is you don't tell lies. Then you don't need a memory or an alibi. And what's wrong in telling the truth? Or saying nothing. Bite your tongue and say nothing. Least said, easiest mended. Because you say things, you can't take it back. And if you tell lies, you have to have a memory and an alibi. So keep it simple. And life will become complicated anyway. Because if you start having a complicated life, you won't get anywhere.